And now for something completely different. Hi guys. I haven't done this before as in this video I'm going to comment on a well a lecture or whatever this is a rant maybe a sermon or a comedy show or um, unthinking ramblings or the mental diarrhea by a Muslim apologist called Adnan Rashid Our study confirms the fact that definitely there is a supreme being out there who has created all of this a lot of these uh, biologists who are teaching the theory of evolution uh, are themselves atheists a lot of them are evolutionists a lot of biologists are actually not atheists and this is what we're up against so i'm going to simply listen to what he says and provide my reaction to what he says and then in the end provide a simple demonstration of his ignorance and level of simplicity using third grade arithmetic now this shows that we need to use and propagate critical thinking to evaluate what people tell us especially when it comes to the claims of the supernatural like magical healing or anything that requires an open heart to believe check everything even if this guy tells you what time it is because his information is unreliable to say the least now i've come across this adnan rashid several times and i've always sort of I felt flabbergasted at how someone without anything useful can do so many things without any positive result and still be considered as someone worth listening to by some Muslims. Okay, that was what I personally think of the person. But let's look at what the contents is and what he delivers here in this video called Incoherence of Atheism where he calls himself a sheikh, or maybe the producers of the video he placed on his channel have labelled him as such, a learned man of Islam. Is this label warranted? Well, you decide. The video runs for one and a half hours and shows Adnan sitting at a desk talking to some brothers we can't see. A man with a, with a beard, wearing a dress, I think, from what I can see, with the brain of a child, as we will shortly see. He starts off by a lengthy greeting of his imaginary master and owner in the sky. And then he begs for money from people, people here on earth that is. He declares zakat, originally a Muslim tax for the needy, as permissible for those who simply provide nonsense talks and debates they think are beneficial for Islam, where this is even used to buy equipment developed by infidels, like a better camera or a microphone. Is this a tad hypocritical, do you think? Well, you decide. Today's lecture is about a very important topic. A topic which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed in the Quran as well. Incoherence of atheism. So we start off with the actual topic at around 7.40 and immediately the tragedy begins. Just so that people understand, before opening my mouth and commenting on Islam, I I read, I study, I ask, I research and verify. Now Adnan Rashid does none of these. He simply blurts out confused and nonsensical claims. Then sometimes he gets so excited he forgets the peace be upon him after saying Muhammad or the Prophet. And in this he discussed the life of the Prophet, not the, not, not the life of the Prophet in detail, an apology for Muhammad. An ap okay, and then we get to the topic. People who do not believe in God, who deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who deny the existence of a creator. And we will discuss the incoherence of the ideas. Deny? What is this deny? Can, can I deny what clearly exists? No. Can I deny what does not exist? No. Can I deny, for example, the existence of rabbits? No, of course not. Can I then deny the existence of an Easter bunny? And this is where it gets interesting because a Christian dictionary includes this denial of gods and a more secular one does not. We learned that denial has to do with concepts, imaginary models and constructs, not existing entities. What is there to deny? So in order, you know, like to deny one of the gods, these need to be demonstrated or established first. 
then you can start denying them. But since this has not happened in the last, what, 200,000 years that we've had gods and goddesses, we can't deny their existence, can we? So what is this incoherence? It is the quality of being illogical, inconsistent, or unclear, according to dictionaries. Now, the statement, I don't have a God belief, is neither illogical, nor is it inconsistent, nor unclear. It is only logical to believe something where there is a reason to believe it. It is also very logical not to believe where there is no reason to. I am also incredibly consistent and very clear on this. Is this too much rationality and reality for simple brains? So what is Adnan Rashid talking about? Does he himself really know? Well, something like 80% of this monologue of his addresses Christians and Christianity. They're not atheists at all. He doesn't understand or know anything about atheists, so he talks about Christians instead. Now, that makes my life a lot easier, as I will focus on what he says about my non-belief, because I am not in the least interested in his opinion on Christians. Firstly, the term atheism, which literally means no godism. Oh boy. No, the A in front of something simply signifies the non or not of whatever follows. So we first need to define what something is in order to understand what the non something is. All right, so the, the atheist is someone who does not believe what the theist believes. And the theist is someone who believes a God exists, who believes that there is evidence for the existence of a God and that this is indicative of his favorite and personal God. So, as an atheist, I do not have that belief. And that's it. I, I don't believe what a theist believes. No, nothing more. Now, what he calls godism is an ism involving gods, i.e. an ideology with a goal, an action, an endeavor following doctrine and or people towards a result involving a god. Now, what is my goal, my action, my endeavor, or my doctrine as someone where this God belief is absent? Where is the ism in atheism? So it's incredibly easy to understand there is no ism. So just as the term atheist is confusing and nonsensical, the elevated form as an ism is completely absurd. But in order to allow a dialogue and show some benign tolerance, I will accept both these attributes and call myself an atheist, intensely practicing atheism 24-7, and sometimes if I skip lunch, more if necessary. Now, I'm not going to comment on the mistakes he makes regarding the Bible or the internal discrepancies he touches on between Muslims, but I will focus only on what he says about atheists and atheism, like that is a position and, 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 I mean, just listen to this. So, atheism is a position which is acquired. It is not a natural position. You're not born with atheism. And he tries to quote ancient Arabic and makes a mistake. And he lies about Barrington Petrovich or, or I, I don't know which one of the two he's actually quoting here. And this is something I have addressed before and shown to be dishonest when first Star Wars films and then sources came up with this argument and this lie. Now, he, it's quite funny. He claims that historically atheism was unknown, which is a complete lie. Like in Saudi Arabia today, where atheists are labeled terrorists. <laughs> the institutions based on God belief killed those who left their group, keeping the fear alive and those who actually wished to leave. But even in Islam, we had the Al-Razis, the al maris and so on. They mocked Islam. They mocked its God, its book, and the messenger. But yes, most people did have a God belief. And it's only in the last, well, 200 years or so, that we have acquired sufficient knowledge to confidently abandon this crutch and security blanket we call God. What he simply says is that we claim we have to reject the wisdom and genius of Newton because he had a God belief, which nobody does. So I don't understand what he's actually so, talking about. Atheists believe 
there is no God. That's what they claim. There is no God. Okay? And because it is a position that's making a claim, they have to obviously give evidence. They have to show, they have to prove that there is no God. No. Why is this so tough to comprehend? If, if I just take the two sentences, one, I do not believe X exists. And two, I believe X does not exist. I think anybody can see that these are two fundamentally different statements. I don't believe, hence no need to provide evidence for what I don't believe. If I positively believe something, well, I need to be able to explain and provide evidence why I believe what I believe, because then I'm making a claim. Then I have to prove there is no God, so as an atheist, I don't. I don't say there is no God. I only say I don't believe what theists believe. And that's all. No claim. None at all. Why make it more complicated? That is the atheist in me. Of course, I'm not only an atheist, because as a naturalist, as a skeptic, as a realist, etc., 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 I can make completely different statements and claims, but not as an atheist. What they do is they throw the burden upon the people of religion that you have to prove that God exists because you are claiming God exists. But in fact, in reality, when you contemplate on the word atheism, you come to realize it is actually a claim in itself. No, it again, no, not believing something is not a claim. There is no need to provide any evidence whatsoever of not believing something. If you want me to believe you were abducted by aliens, you need to provide the evidence. And if you want me to believe your God exists, you need to provide the evidence. It's that easy. Not believing that someone was abducted by aliens neither means I acknowledge the existence of aliens, nor do I make any kind of claim regarding their existence. It is incoherent. The word itself is incoherent in itself. Yes, but in a different way than he thinks. And no, if I don't believe dragons exist, I am not acknowledging the existence of dragons, which I've just shown with aliens. Same story. So, when you say no God, you are actually acknowledging the, acknowledging the idea of God exists. Sure, the idea, the concept of gods exists, but nothing more. Just like the concept of, I don't know, Cinderella or Little Red Riding Hood exists, or the wolf blowing down a house. But the moment you confuse fairy tale with reality, that's when the problem is yours and not mine. If you, the theist, would simply shut up and let everyone live their own way and show some tolerance, nobody would care. But for some reason, theists all over stick their doctrine into the lives of others, and that's where the problems start. I am apolitical. I don't get involved in politics. Yeah, and then he contradicts himself because apolitical is not getting involved in politics and atheist is not getting involved in gods without any claim, which is the opposite of what he stated just a few minutes ago. Yeah, okay, theists exist, sure, but not the monster they worship. I do not believe this without evidence. And then he can't help himself and he, he, he can't stick to, to atheists. He constantly refers back to Christians and then mentions that Christians used to kill atheists. I mean, Muslims do this today. And then he suddenly comes up with all these atheists in history when he just claimed there were none. It's very strange what he's doing. And then in criticizing Christians, he does not realize that he is actually describing Islam at the same time, where the Quran is only available in ancient Arabic. And people are killed if they voice their opinions about Muhammad or gods. No different to what the Christian groups did a couple of hundred years ago. And now, next time he addresses atheists is here at the 30 minute mark. Okay, it is not something rational or intellectual. And amazingly, it has become fashion now, even in the Muslim world. People think when they, are, they, they call themselves atheists, they, they look cool. Or just because they're not religious, there's something special about that. So atheism came from European experience. It is purely a product 
of what happened in Europe during the Enlightenment period in particular. Atheism, a lot of philosophers became atheists. They just broke away from religion. They found it easier to attack religion because Christianity was very weak. But amazingly, we never had this phenomenon in the history of Islam. Hypocrite much? Come on. If Islam didn't have the death threat for apostasy, there would not be any Islam. Even Islamic clerics confirm this. And as it stands, Islam is dying fast. And not due to media, but the availability of information to everyone. Yes, Islamic countries try and suppress the internet, but are unable to do so completely. So, just like communism died when more and more information became available to the people, Islam is dying exactly for the same reason. And nowhere faster than in the Gulf countries. And he talks about the fact of God without ever having provided anything which would make it a fact. He's like a child pleading with mummy to accept his imaginary friend, trying to simply define this into existence by making those who don't agree with his childish beliefs look bad. And that's primitive. Come on, bring evidence and I will change my belief. Will he change his? No way. And don't worry, now it gets even worse. Secularism, which is political atheism. No, no, not, not at all. Political atheism is secular. I mean, that's bullshit. Like, the US. Is, is completely secular, yet full of God beliefs. And then you have other countries like Germany where the government actually collects the money for the churches. Question. Who tells you what human rights are? Me and you, not God. It's not Allah who tells you what human rights are. Yes, indeed. We decide and confirm. No Islamic God gets to decide on who can be enslaved and that women are a degree below men. That is no longer acceptable. We humans have deemed it not acceptable. If your God still thinks that we should enslave, you know, people and rape women and blah, no, it is not acceptable. That's it. For example, and humans the, may know no. something is morally wrong. During the 18th century, Atlantic slave trade, when people were being kidnapped from Africa. The Atlantic slave trade was the same as the Islamic slave trade. People without rights, he quite, he, he, he calls them exactly that. This is the pot calling the kettle black, where Muslims enslaved more, killed more, and destroyed more. So why does he even bring up the Atlantic slave trade? He makes it look as though people are being killed in the streets in the US because there are no gods. And this is a brutal lie, sheer fantasy just trying to make everybody else look bad, bringing up slavery, bringing up killing and gun laws and things like that. You know, in, in the real world, people in, in Islamic states are being mutilated, crucified, beheaded, stoned to death in the name of his God and on a daily basis. So what are atheistic arguments against religion, for example? Again, it gets worse and worse. Not believing without evidence is not an argument against gods. That's silly. He then makes up stuff, making a false claim that atheists claim X. And this is then wrong. When no atheist can make a claim by definition, an atheist is simply reacting to claims by theists. If there were no theists, there would be no atheist. Come on, it's that simple. So, once again, he contradicts himself within minutes. And, come on, we need to face it, he lies, and quite blatantly at it, claiming that atheists claim the universe came about by accident, when, in reality, an atheist only lacks a belief regarding gods, and B, every educated person will immediately say, I don't know, when it comes to the universe, to life and consciousness. Okay. So why, cannot, why can't we use science to prove God, because science is limited. Science has limited itself. 
So next science is limited and it's getting quite childish here because he doesn't understand the first thing about anything scientific. Just that it's haram, copying ghazal. He makes a complete fool of himself when towards the end he talks about evolution and macroevolution and a fish turning into a crocodile. Uh, or a fish turning into a crocodile. Oh dear, this is so childish. I mean, he simply lies, he misleads, he misrepresents. But what is funny is people corrected him when he made mistakes when reciting something in Arabic. But here, nobody corrects him when he goes completely off the rails with his lack of understanding evolution and talking utter nonsense. Why? I mean, why not? Why is nobody correcting him? ...that all humans actually come from one woman. Uh, and she's called mitochondrial Eve. <laughs> oh, goodness, no. He, he actually thinks mitochondrial Eve is real, a single person, ignoring the Y chromosome Adam, and that scientists actually have a sense of humor. They be these Adam and Eve. And I suppose for him, Jurassic Park and E.T. were probably documentaries or something. I mean, I, why would he think that Isaac Newton would be a Muslim? Why? <laughs> Because, and this is his only explanation, well, there's day and night. That's the best argument he has. Day and night. Come on, a spinning planet in a solar system in some corner of the universe is his evidence that this God exists? Really? That's what he says. Then he, he goes to, to fine-tuning and all these other idiotic arguments, but he can't even determine the distance between Earth and Sun. And if you move the sun, even though it's 90 million miles away from its constant, even slightly, few inches, few feet, few meters, you would all cease to exist. You would die immediately. Now, how come he can't determine the exact distance to Earth from the sun? And why is it that he actually thinks that a few inches away further you die? Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, he can't do that because there is no precise distance. I mean, he's totally ignorant. He doesn't understand that in this universe it's chaos, it's, it's imprecise. Earth wobbles around to some things like that. And he does not understand that the distance between Earth and Sun varies by something like three billion miles every single year. And his arithmetic is so weak, just like his gods of the Quran, as I've shown previously. Anyway, work it out. Work it out mathematically. If you're doing 500 miles an hour in a jet, and how many hours is uh, 80 years or 70 years? And multiply that by 500. How many miles will that make? It will not make 90 million miles. You cannot reach the sun in your lifetime. Can you see? Like a, I don't know, like a child, he believes we need to ask his God for permission if we want to leave Earth. Now, did, does the Quran, or did anybody tell NASA or Elon Musk, does the Quran somehow give you the email address or the form we need to fill out if we want to leave Earth? Let's, let's take a look at his claim, all right? That w he says we can't reach the sun in our lifetime, traveling at 500 miles per hour. Let's, let's just check this. Like I said, come on, let's be critical. Let's check it. Since nobody in the audience had the guts to check, let's say the target is 93 million miles away. Let's get out any, any kind of phone developed by infidels, enter 500, multiply it by 24, which gives us the miles per day in one day. So there's 12,000 miles in one day. Now you enter the well, next number, you just multiply this. How many days a year? 365, you get 4.38 million miles per year in one year. Now you can already see four and a half million miles per year. It's going to be tough. But now if you enter another, what, 80 years as a lifetime, 350 million miles. So how many times can you get to the sun and back in a lifetime? traveling at 500 miles per hour. This shows how remarkably simple this guy is. Even the simplest, I mean, this is third grade arithmetic, and he can't do it. He can't even check anything himself and makes a fool of himself here over something so 
elementary, and then he goes to, you know, like he can't resist the Muslim apologist favorites, all the, the universe, everything that begins to exist. Yes, that's how stupid he is. And then, you know, it's consciousness, morality. He doesn't admit any of the usual childish story. And then, of course, the nothing from nothing except the universe which his God came up with from nothing. Oh, it's so terrible. What are they? Number one, cosmological argument. That everything that begins, every time, everything that begins to exist has a cause. And then he goes into the summary and... Again, this shows his childish disposition, this worship of ancient superstitions where he can't even get the direction right in which the stone of the Muslims needs to be circled. It's, it's actually sad to see a wasted mind and then knowing that people actually believe what he says, unchecked and unchallenged. And this is my point, you know. He simply refuses to acknowledge that I, the atheist, will change my opinion and my belief when confronted with convincing evidence. Adnan Rashid will not. And that's why everything he says must be questioned. I hope I've made my point. Thanks for your time.